What is going on, New York Giants fans? D. Illa here. It's the end of June. Training camp's right around the corner. The season will be here before we know it. Big topic of discussion this offseason has been the running back position. Who's going to be that number two running back behind Devin Singletary? Obviously, this is going to be a running back by committee. You have guys like Eric Gray, Joshua Corbin, and Tyrone Tracy, who was drafted in the fourth round. Tyrone Tracy's a guy, a lot of this fan base likes Tyrone Tracy. I'm kind of like in a wait and see pattern with him because when I watch his college film, now I'm, I'm no expert at this at all, not saying I am, but when I watch his college film, it seems like he kind of struggles to make things happen when the blocking is not necessarily there. When there's a hole that's opened up, he hits the hole, gets upfield, you know, gains positive yards. He does that pretty well at the college level. But when there's not necessarily something that opens up for him that he can see when he's in the backfield, he kind of struggles to make things happen, create his own running room. That's just what I've noticed. Joshua Corbin, he's a guy that I've liked ever since we drafted out of Florida State. I'd like to see him get more opportunities. Will that ever happen with this team? I don't know. Eric Gray, I don't really know what he is at the NFL level. Haven't seen enough of him as a running back, but you know we'll see with him also. But something that I'm genuinely concerned with with this running back core is pass protection. And this is an aspect that we cannot overlook. Devin Singletary I, himself, I think he's going to bring enough in terms of pass protection that we can get by with him. Now, obviously, with an offensive line like ours, you're going to need your tight ends to chip. You're going to need your running backs to chip. Pass protection is very key, especially if this offensive line isn't going to come out and block as well as, as everybody would like them to. So you need that help from your running backs and tight ends. Like, I'm not necessarily as concerned as other people are when it comes to this running game. I'm more concerned with our secondary play. I'm more concerned with our quarterback play. I'm more concerned with our offensive line play. And I'm worried about our edges being able to contain the run. Those are the my big concerns. I think we're going to be able to do enough with Devin Singletary to where our running game is respectable. You know, you watch Devin Singletary play with the Houston Texans last year. You know, I brought this up before Devin Singletary was even signed by this team. I actually called that before Saquon Barkley was even, you know, released and became a free agent. You know, I thought that that was the guy that this team eventually would bring on, especially with the Brian Dable, Joe Shane ties. And I think he'll do well for this team. But I do believe we kind of need some more explosiveness in our backfield. Um, a guy's name that I keep on hearing being brought up as a potential cut candidate is Miles Sanders. And I'm doing a lot of, a lot of fantasy stuff right now, a lot of dynasty research, a lot of redraft research. And his name keeps on coming up because, you know, that team drafted Jonathan Brooks in the second round at pick number 47 after they traded up with the Indianapolis Colts. He's their running back of the future. They also have Rashad Penny there. And, of course, they have Chuba Hubbard, who filled in for Miles Sanders last year after Miles Sanders really couldn't get it done in the running game playing behind that poor offensive line. But Chuba Hubbard came in there and rushed for 902 yards once he became the steady full-time back, basically the full-time back for the Carolina Panthers. You know, the rest of that team struggled. Rookie quarterback Bryce Young had issues. The only guy that could really get anything done on that team was Adam Thielen. So Miles Sanders, with those three running backs currently in place there, even though Rashad Penny has an extensive injury history they have three running backs there if they cut miles sanders i do believe they could save like two hundred thousand dollars as far as their cap goes so he may be a potential cut candidate but he's a guy that signed a four-year 25 million dollar contract last year so i don't know if they'd be willing to to just cut him like that because of the dead cap this that and the other but if he is let go i mean there, there's been a lot of questions especially amongst this fan base in terms of this running game Maybe Miles Sanders is a guy that we bring onto this football team. You know, I know he struggled last year, but I do believe Miles Sanders is still an explosive player. Now, a couple of years back when he had that 1,300 yard, you know, yards from scrimmage season, you know, in the passing game and running game, a lot of Philly fans were out there talking about how Miles Sanders was better than Saquon Barkley, this, that, and the other. I never necessarily believed that. I thought that was completely outrageous. Even though Miles Sanders, for the majority of his career, you know, he's been an 800 yard rushing running back and he, he adds a little bit of something in the passing game. Not much he did in his rookie year. He was very good in the passing game his rookie year, but, but years after that really didn't do too much. But I do still believe he does have some explosiveness. Now, a lot of people may say Miles Sanders, you know, the, the numbers that he put up with the Philadelphia Eagles were probably contributed to that offensive line and, and, you know, the line that he was running behind. And you may be right. I mean, that could be completely true. I'm not saying that that's not the case. But I do believe he's still a, a good, the solid player. I think he would be a good addition to this to, to this roster right now if we could get him at a cheap price. I do believe if he's cut. I don't think anybody's going to pick him up off waivers, you know, considering that deal that he signed last year at four years, $25 million, like I said. 
So he'd probably clear waivers and then have to sign another deal. And if it's at an affordable price, I mean, I think he, he would be a very good addition to, to this running back court. Now, he doesn't add much in terms of pass protection, and that's something I'm very worried about with this running back group outside of, 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 of um, Devin Singletary. But, you know, when you need other options, you got guys that are sitting behind Devin Singletary that don't have much experience. You know, there's a veteran out there like Miles Sanders who used to play for a division rival like the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, maybe we could switch it up on them. They got Saquon Barkley, we got Miles Sanders. Obviously, we've got the latter of the two, but Maybe Miles can come back and uh, get a little bit of redemption against his old team. Who knows? Maybe Miles Sanders could come out and actually have a decent year and, and, and really take it to the Philadelphia Eagles in, in the games that he played against them if we did decide to bring him on. Then we could rub rub that right in the faces of all them Philadelphia Eagles fans out there. I think that would be pretty good, you know, considering they, they took Saquon Barkley from us. Who would have saw that coming if that's the way things work out? <laughs> But, yeah, he's just a name that I keep hearing being thrown out there. And I just wanted to bring his name to everybody's attention just in case in the future this does take place. And, and you know, people start talking about Miles Sanders' name. I'm just I'm just saying this is a name that I've heard thrown around a lot as far as a running back goes that could potentially be cut. But that's it for the video. I'm looking forward to training camp. Um, still worried about the secondary. Secondary scares the living hell out of me, especially all this talk about, you know, Cordell Flott being our number two corner. You know, you're talking about bringing a guy and putting him outside where he's going up against substantially better talent, and he really couldn't cut it inside where the talent is not nearly as good. You're playing against more physically imposing players on the outside, bigger bodies, guys that are fast. Maybe the guys that play outside, they don't have the agility of slot wide receivers, but they're still big and fast, and they can dominate you just with their size. And I think that would be a big-time issue with Cordell Flott. I don't think he's a good enough player, neither is Darnay Holmes to play out there with that kind of talent. So that doesn't really make any sense to me. I know guys like Chat Sports come out here and talk about restructuring deals to bring on guys like Stefan Gilmore, and that doesn't make any sense to me, man. If this team was more well-built and, and ready to compete right now, I could see us making a move, restructuring a deal, pushing more money back in a contract, but based on where this team is right now, man, you have to know your window as to when you're able to win. And I don't believe that window is open for us right now. So there's no reason to push money back in deals and screw up our our cap, you know, a couple of years down the road. You don't want to do that right now. If the team was built and you were looking for a piece that could possibly make you a Super Bowl contender or a real or a team that was a true threat in the NFC, then yeah, you make that move. But again, that window's not open for us just yet. So you can't be stupid and make moves like that just to bring on an additional corner because in the end that one single player is probably not going to make that much of a difference for you. But that's it for the video, man. Almost at 10 minutes at this point. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.